Hi everyone, it's Deanna Guerrero and I am back with the second part of Seven Steps to Prayer that Brings Results. So, we are going to go ahead and continue. Um, I'm going to open in prayer just as I do in every broadcast. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for this lesson that you are teaching us this day, that I am just the instrument, that I am just the messenger bringing forth this word. It is your word, Lord. It is It is um, the incorruptible word of God. I thank you, Lord, that this is your seed, your word seed that is being planted into these listeners, Lord, that your word will not return into you void, but that it shall accomplish that which you have sent it forth, that you're raising up those prayer warriors, Lord, for the kingdom of God, that we are training and equipping them now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you've given them ears to hear and eyes to see and an understanding heart, that you're giving them the rhema word of God this day so that they will know how they are to proceed in their lives and on the assignment, the assignment that you have called them to in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, again, remember Isaiah 62, 6, that you are the watchman on the wall. God has called you forth to be a prayer warrior, and you are getting equipped right now. You are sharpening your sword of the Spirit. You have up your shield of faith. You have on your, your helmet of salvation. You've got on your breastplate of righteousness. You've got on your, your belt of truth and your feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You can find where your armor is uh, in um, the book of Ephesians, Ephesians 6. And also I have a teaching on the seri um, a series of putting on the full armor of God. So you can go back and you can also listen to that. We're going to continue in the seven steps to prayer that bring results. Now, if you're just coming into this teaching, um, I encourage you, you can go ahead and watch this one, but then go back and re, um, watch the first, <clears throat> the first um, tape of this or listen to it. So, um, we've talked about prayer that brings results. Um, it must be based on God's Word. So, we're always going to start with the answer, which is God's Word. Our foundation scriptures was Mark 21, um, verses 21 through 22, um, which is, when you pray, believe that you receive. And then Mark 11, 24. Okay? And those are some good examples of, you know, that Jesus has given to us. <clears throat> and then um, we also read John 15, verse 7, which also... Um, talked about, you know, whatever we, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask what you will and it shall be done. Um, 1 John 3, 22, um, that we're confident that whatever we ask, he's going to do it. Um, also 1 John 5, 14, 15. Okay. And then we read Isaiah 55, 8 through 11, which told us that God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. However, he says that his, just as the rain comes down from the heavens, the snow comes down and it waters the earth and it doesn't return to him again, but that it produces what he has sent it to produce. I'm going to read verse 11. So shall my, um, actually I'll start in 10. For as the rain and snow come down from the heavens and return not there again, but water the earth and make it bring forth and sprout, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void without producing any effect useless, but it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So God's word is always going to produce what he sent it forth to produce. We, we read in um, Psalms 119, 89, that God's word is established in heaven. Heaven is perfect. It is a perfect place. He's given us his word so that we can establish his word here on earth. We have the kingdom of God here in us, and we create our world around us. We as prayer warriors are standing in the gap for those that don't know. 
and we have a mission, so we need to know His Word. We need to be well versed in His Word, so we'll know what to pray when we don't know what to pray. We pray in the Spirit, in our supernatural prayer language, so that when we don't know what to pray in a situation, we've gone to the Word of God, that we're praying in the Spirit, and it's going to the throne of God, and it's pulling down those strongholds. But today, we're going to focus on these seven steps. Okay, we, um, which was, again, prayer that brings results must be based on God's word. Number two was begin the application of faith. Well, how do you begin the application of faith? Confession out of the words of your mouth, your profession, your profession of faith, the words that you speak, you believe that you receive when you pray. And you're going to hold fast to that confession. You're not going to let anything take it away from you. You're going to act as if that word is already done. You're going to take steps. You're going to, you're going to just... Step out in faith concerning it. You're going to ask God, how do I take a step of faith um, to do this so that I'm not just confessing it but have no action behind it? Show me how to do that. And the Holy Spirit is going to lead you into all truth and show you how to do that. And then the second step was, or the third step rather, was to refuse to allow doubt and fear to enter into your consciousness. Um, you're going to have to go and do what it says in 2 Corinthians 10.5. You are going to have to pull down those imaginations, those thoughts that are trying to exalt themselves against the knowledge of the Word of God, which is God's Word, right? So you have a job to do. You are going to be guarding that Word in your heart. Now, the, the fourth step that we're going to start with today is see yourself succeed. See yourself as successful. See yourself having that which you prayed for. You see yourself... Um, Receiving that which you've prayed for. You receive that success that you see yourself succeeding and not failing. Let's go to um, Proverbs 4.20. Proverbs 4. And starting in verse 20. And we're going to read through 22. <laughs> you know, let's start it. Yeah, let's... Start in 20. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Don't you just love that? I'm going to read the Amplified Version. My son, attend to my words, consent and submit to my sayings. Let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, healing and health to all their flesh. Keep and guard your heart with all vigilance, and above all that you guard, for out of it flow the springs of life. Love it. Now let's go to Matthew 6 22. This is how important God's Word is. It's giving you life, it's giving you healing to all your flesh, but you have to guard and keep your heart. You have to be vigilant. You have to guard it. Guard it. You know, keep keep what keep that word in there. Because out of it, out of that word that is planted in your heart that's allowed to grow will flow the issues of life. That means that whatever you need, in whatever situation that you're in, you're going to know what to do in that situation because the word of God is dwelling within you and it's telling you what to do. Now let's go to Matthew 6, 22 through 23. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. I'm going to read the Amplified. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is sound, your entire body will be full of light. But if your eye is unsound, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the very light of you, in you, your conscience is darkness, how dense is that darkness? How do you get you, your eye to be light? The light of the Word of God in you. This is going to create light and darkness within you. It's going to take that darkness, the darkness of this world out of you. 
It's the light of the Word of God. Now, we're going to, so again, we're seeing, you got to see, see the Word of God becoming, the Word of God that you're speaking, that you're planting, you're seeing it grow up and become. Okay, that's what we're doing. We're seeing ourselves succeed and not failing. Um, that's what J Joshua had to do. You know, when Moses had died, God told him, God told Joshua, Moses, my servant is dead. And then he told him, you know, a, fur a little further down in the in the um, Joshua 1, he said, you know, keep the, this book of the law in front of you, which was the word of God, the first, I think, five chapters of the, of the Old Testament before your eyes. Meditate on it day and night. Do not let it depart from before your eyes. Put it in your ears, your eyes. Meditate on it day and night. So when they went across... Um, you know, the Jordan, and then they marched around Jericho. You know, he gave, um, he had to have meditated on that word so that he would hear when God told him, I want you to march around Jericho, which is this big, strong, walled city, for seven days and not say anything. Just have the people walk around once a day for seven days. What do you think he was doing? He was, they were meditating, had all the Israelite children walking around. They couldn't say anything. They couldn't make any noise. They had to walk around it. And as they're walking around, I imagine that they are meditating on the Word of God because they're like, this is a, if they didn't, they'd see these big, strong walls and say, how are these walls going to come tumbling down? How are we going to get um, this city that God has promised us? So they're they're meditating on the promises of God. They're meditating. They're thinking on the things that God has done for them. Um, and then on the seventh day, you know, they he said, walk around seven times, seven times around the walls of the city. They're walking around seven times, seven times. They're meditating day and night. Those seven times, they're meditating on the goodness of God, what God has promised them, the promises of God, how he told Abraham to go out and to count the stars in the sky and that that would help be how many descendants that he had. And Abraham believed him. And he had a son, and now they were all descendants of Abraham, and how God had parted the Red Sea for them to rock across on dry land, how during those four, 40 years not one of them was feeble or sick among them, and they're meditating on the goodness of God, how he had rained down manna from heaven, and he had fed them, um, he had given them water from a rock, and they're meditating on the goodness of God, and they're seeing themselves succeed, and on the seventh day, when they're walking around seven times, the wall, and then they, they gave a triumphant shout, and the walls of the city came tumbling down, that's the effect that they saw themselves succeed, but they didn't see it in the physical first, they had to see it in their mind first, see yourself succeed over and over again, and then give a triumphant shout because then you have the victory. <laughs> now, let's. I did not plan to give that illustration, but clearly it was something that somebody needed to hear. Um, I'm a runner, and you always hear some people probably get tired of me saying that. But you know, I'm training for a marathon, and when I'm tra training, you know, it's quite intense, and sometimes the training is so intense and tiring that I have to, I, I see myself succeeding. I see myself crossing the finish line. I see myself increasing in speed, increasing in time and able to finish that last couple of miles. So that's what I'm telling you to do, to see yourself at the finish line, to see yourself here before it actually becomes. You have to see yourself. Let's go to Romans 13, 14. And it says, but clothe yourself, this is in the Amplified Version, but clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and make no provision for indulging the flesh. Put a stop to thinking about the evil cravings of your physical nature to gratify its desires and its lust. Don't make any provision for failure. Only make a provision for success. You are, a, you, you will not, you are going to succeed. Prepare to succeed. Be prepared to succeed. No matter what it looks like, just say no. The word of God says, I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. He is not a man that he should lie. His word promises me and I believe it. Okay, now that was number four. See yourself succeed and, and not fail. Now the fifth step is to testify of what you believe. 
you testify to the word. Let's go to Revelations 12, 11. In my meetings, um, I will have a time where I'll say, do we have any testimonies? And people will share how they were healed, how the time before they had come and we had laid hands on them or a family member and now they're healed. They had had a bad report from the doctor and now they, after we prayed, they came back and now the, the tests are completely different. Somebody's believing for provision. They came and, uh, you know, the Lord met that need. We've had people come that needed a job, and they would come and say, you know what, the Lord provided this, opened this door for me. You know, people have needed automobiles, and we've prayed, and they've gotten vehicles, you know, exceedingly abundantly above all that they could, they thought or e even imagined that they could get. So we, we share those testimonies because in Revelations 12, 11, it says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. So we've already overcome because of the blood of the lamb, not anything that we've done, but by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. So we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. We are redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And we have a right to all that Jesus can do. If Jesus can do it on this earth, then we can too. Because He is the Anointed One and He has given us His authority. Authority to use His name. The blood of Jesus has um, redeemed us from the curse. We add our testimony to what we have received by the blood. Okay, So when you add your testimony, you are fueling your faith because Oh, remember when God did this for me? Remember when we had that need and they said, no, you'd never come out of this bankruptcy, but we did and now we're prospering. Praise God. You overcome by the blood of the lamb and your, the word of your testimony. That stirs your faith. And remember how Paul told Timothy, stir up your faith. Um, we have to stir up our faith, but we're stirring up our faith. But when we're telling it to others, we're also stirring up their faith because then they're knowing, they, they have a knowing that if God did it for you, he'll do it for them because he's no respecter of persons. Amen. So we have to add our testimony to what we've received by the blood. Share your testimony for what God has done for you. If you've been healed, Tell others about it. Tell them. Share that testimony. And then I want the, the sixth step is to get involved helping someone else. Don't keep this for yourself. God has blessed you. You go out and be a blessing to others. Let's go to Galatians 6. I'm sorry. I apologize. It is, yes, Galatians 5. Galatians 5, verse 6. For if we are in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith activated and energized and expressed and working through love. Okay. So you're going to go help others. By helping others, it's going to work through love. It's going to be energized. Your faith is going to be activated and energized and expressed and worked, working through love. Amen. Now, the seventh step is get on the giving end. Luke 6, 38. You are going to give. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. That's what the Word of God tells us. It's going to turn there, put it before my eyes. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall be given to your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, will, will it shall be measured to you again. Now, if you need healing, you need to pray for someone else. Pray for someone that needs healing. You've believed that you've received your healing. The Word of God says that God sent His Word and healed you. By His stripes you are healed. Now you get busy laying hands on the sick and they will recover because the Word of God says that a believer shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You share it. You get on the giving end. If you need provision, 
give, just as we talked about earlier. You give what you need, and then it will be given into you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Um, let's go to James. Let's Talking about healing, let's go to James chapter 5. Verse 16. And I went to the wrong book. <laughs> James 5, 16. I was like, that's not the one I'm looking for. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Pray for others. The way you measure it, the thought, time, and study of how you measure the word is how it will be measured back to you. So if you give your time, your attention, your study to the word of God, it's going to, because give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall be given to your bosom. Same goes with the word that you're studying. And you're going to put that word to work. Now I want to leave you, those are the seven steps um, to prayer that brings results. Um, in this session we covered see yourself succeed, not fail. Um, that was number four. Number five was testify of what you believe. Um, which is the word we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And then number um, six would get involved helping someone else go out, help others. And then number seven is get on the giving end. Um, you, If you need healing, you're going to pray for the um, for the sick. If you need finances, then you are going to give whatever you have. It might be time. You might not have any money to give. You may give a lunch away. You may go just help somebody, mow somebody's lawn, go clean somebody's house. You are going to give. Um, so you get on the get the giving end. Um, you know, the word, the word says that God is love. The Word of God says that God is love. We know Him as our loving Heavenly Father, right? We know Him as Abba Daddy, that He cares for us, that He loves us. Um, a lot of times, or rather, theology actually uh, magnifies the power of God. It magnifies the power of God rather than His love, rather than His compassion. But we that have an intimate relationship, that seek Him, um, that commune with Him daily, know Him as a compassionate God that loves us. This Word, the Word of God, magnifies His willingness to use His power um, more than the power itself. He wants to use His power for your good. And I want you to know that you should never doubt God's willingness to use His power to set you free. And how does He do that? Well, you set His power free when you go to His Word and you commune with Him. Amen? Do you receive that Word? Now, I will... Um, I'm going to hold up my notes. So, hopefully, you'll be able to see them. And... Then I'll just raise them up a little. And then... You can always reach me on my website, and if you'd like for me to email these to you, um, you can email me, and I will scan them and try to get them to you. Okay? So let's close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, that those men, women, boys, and girls that have heard this message have received it. Whatever part of it that you need them to receive, that they have received it. I thank you, Lord, because we prayed this, and your word says that we have confidence, whatever we ask the Father in the name of Jesus, that we are to believe that we receive it and we shall have it. So I believe that they received this message and that it will set them free, that this word is healing the sick, and that it is setting the captives free. And I thank you, Lord, for blessing every person that's listening to this message, whatever their need may be, that you are meeting that need. In the name of Jesus, amen. Until next time, be blessed.